What's happening, financial coaches? It's Pete here. I had a question about balancing your work week. So when I first started in financial services, and especially financial advising, where sometimes you weren't going to have a really strict 95 work week, sometimes you're going to have to work in the evenings or on the weekends. We talked about your model work week. What work week would you be comfortable reproducing on a regular basis? And this means that it can be different for everyone. And I actually have a friend who's an optometrist and his office has to have Saturday hours. And so he works every Saturday. He has, as far as I've ever known him, never had a Saturday off, which is funny, but he takes his weekends Friday and Sunday. Now, I think a lot of people would probably not like that, but I'm not saying what's right for you. I'm just saying that what your model work week may be different than somebody else's ideal model work week. And so what I want to say here in terms of balance depends on a lot of what your family needs. If you have young children at home and you want to spend time with them during their developing, through their developing years, then it's probably going to be something that you want to be available earlier in the day before they go to bed. If you have kids that are in school and do after school activities, you may not see them till five or six o'clock at night. So you can have a much more standard work day. So, so a lot of that depends on what your family structure is. But what I would say here is that most people want to work with a financial coach, in my experience, during the day. They will take their calls over lunch or before work or during their commute. A lot of people, my experience again, not everyone, just don't want to be burdened with this on what they consider their personal time. So if you think about most people that work eight to five or nine to five or nine to six or however it is, we are engaged saying, hey, this is a work day. This is the work hours. I want to get all my stuff in. But when you go home and you start getting on your couch, are you interested in getting on the phone with someone and talking about the finances? Probably not. And so most people, even though I've made evening hours available and sometimes use those because that's the only time people are available, most people would like to get that in on time that would otherwise be allocated to other work, right? And most people, even if they schedule something, say 10 a.m. on Saturday, often no-show or reschedule because when it comes down to it, they sleep in a little bit Saturday, they get up. They're taking it slow and they realize, oh man, I've got to talk to my financial coach at 10 o'clock. I'd rather not. I'd rather get on to the weekend here, go out, hang out with the kids, whatever it might be, run some errands. And so your work week will differ. And you might find that people in your community work certain hours. They don't have the flexibility. They're not white collar workers and are in an office and can step out of their office and take a phone call. They're on an assembly line, maybe a much more fixed schedule. They don't have time until after 5 p.m. And so you just might find that your appointments kind of cluster around 5, 6, 7 p.m. And so that's something you're going to have to think about. Hey, if I'm finding that I have desires for office hours or call hours or coaching hours during these periods of time because of the people that I'm working with or my niche, is that really something that I want to fit in my schedule? Are you okay dedicating the 5 to 7 p.m. hours to work? Now, in the past, I have done that. And in the past, I have done that because a lot of times the rest of my family was busy doing dinner or activities or things like that. But now that life changes and evolves, that is often the time that I get most of my quality time with my family. So I don't really care to make the 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. hours available. Obviously, if there's an exception, someone that I really want to speak to, someone that I need to speak to, someone who doesn't have flexibility, I'm going to make as much accommodation as I possibly can. But for most people, what I think you want to do is you want to figure out when you want to be available and you have to look realistically at your clientele and when are they going to be available. And sometimes this will just take several weeks, maybe a few months of taking appointments and just seeing where they fall. And I would also say, here's my other tip, that if you do take an appointment, that tends to be outside the times that you would normally do it. So when I was a financial advisor, this is when I first started doing this, that someone would come in and they say, hey, I'm actually going to be in town. I'd love to meet with you in person to get some of this stuff done, but I'm coming in on the weekend. Can we meet Saturday morning? Yes, we can. But what I would let them know is that's not a normal office hour for me. That's not normal working hours, but I'd be happy to do it on this occasion, make an exception in this case. What I just don't want to do is through my silence, maybe suggest or imply that that's no problem. On an ongoing basis, I'd be happy to meet Saturdays at 10 a.m. because that cuts into my weekend, right? So depending on who you're working with and depending on your schedule, definitely make sure that you are effectively communicating that to your people. And then also try some stuff out, see what people really need and figure out what works for your customers. Hopefully that helps. I'll see you later.